Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking about how to study Anki cards that you haven't studied in a long time. Now, this may be because, you know, you're resitting an exam and you haven't studied a particular deck for a very long time because you stopped it after your exam. Or it might be that you've got an upcoming exam which covers same content that you've previously studied but had stopped studying for a long time. Or you may have just been on a roll with Anki and then suddenly decided to stop for whatever reason, you know, you might have lacked motivation, you might have just stopped using Anki, might have gone on holiday, whatever it is, the point of this video is how do I deal with cards that I'd studied before, but you know, now they've all built up into these massive reviews and of course you can't get through all your reviews. So do you reset your deck? What do you do? Do you change the settings? This video will cover all of that. So essentially, this video assumes that you've already had a deck that you've studied previously, so that now if you were to set the reviews to max, you know, if you were to set 9999 as the reviews, then you'd have an alarmingly large number of reviews that would be difficult to actually do and it would be too overwhelming. So then what do you do in this case? So there are two ways to go about this. Either you reset all the decks, which I don't recommend doing, or you follow the steps that I will then show in this video. So keep watching. Now the reason why I don't recommend resetting your decks, even though that's the most easiest and the most logical thing that you think to do, is because you've studied that deck previously and by studying that deck previously, Anki has held information, scheduling information about how hard or easy you found those cards, depending on how many times you clicked again and how many times you clicked good. And that's the whole point of Anki, it works on a spaced repetition algorithm to show you cards when it thinks you're about to forget them. Now the whole issue here is that you've essentially forgotten most or nearly all of your decks, so it plans to show you all the cards in that deck, which is obviously not ideal. However, by completely resetting that deck, you're setting everything to zero, meaning you're basically starting out from fresh, but there are still cards that you do know. So then if you were to go through those cards as new, it would just be wasting time by showing you cards for the first time essentially, but actually you already kind of know that information before. So instead what I recommend doing and what my method that I'll teach you focuses on is instead of resetting all of your cards to actually plan to go through all of your reviews first, bit by bit, by reducing the number of old reviews you do until you catch up with all your reviews. Now, you wanna change some settings. You don't wanna just do all the reviews as they are because most likely you'll have forgotten most of the cards and just keep pressing again and again and again and it would just be frustrating because you will never get through all your reviews. So instead, I've split up my process into three parts, one before the review, one during the review and one after the review. Before the review, what you'll first want to do is go through each card one by one in the browser and make sure you relearn that information. Now, that's not the most ideal way of doing things because you'll be passively reading the information in the card. However, it's better than just going straight into the reviews because that way your mind will kind of get rejigged and those things that you studied before might start to resurface at the back of your mind. Now, another advantage of doing this is that while you're going through the cards, you might realize, okay, this information I actually completely forgot. Even though you might have been the ones who made those cards yourself ages ago, you might have thought, okay, like I actually forgot what this information is. Then that will give you an opportunity to flag that card as red for things that you completely forgot. And there might be other things that you, okay, didn't completely forget, but you know, you might benefit from improving that card. Maybe by adding pictures or diagrams to make that card easier to remember. And that way you're doing yourself a service by making your reviews a lot easier by adding extra information, by adding images. And what I like to do is if there's any definitions of words that I'm unsure about, I'll add them in the extra definition section. And one add-on that's made my life so easy to do this is the AMBOSS add-on. So what AMBOSS add-on allows you to do, it essentially underlines medical words and when you hover over them, it gives you a definition. So when I'm updating my cards, I'll use that definition and put that in the extra information section. And when you're doing your reviews, you can hover over to that definition, AMBOSS pop-up will come up and you can even click more to learn more about that particular topic 
And without even leaving Anki, it would just open a little pop-up on the side showing you more information, whether that be a condition or a definition. And it also has a search functionality where you can search something up that you might have forgotten or that you want to quickly search up. Firstly, it's so much better than using Google because it's, you know, medical knowledge that's built in. Whereas with Google, you're going to have a bit more basic information or patient tailored information. Whereas with this, this is aimed for, you know, medical students and doctors. So you've got medical information right there. And secondly, you're not leaving Anki. So you're not having to go to a new browser. You're not wasting time. Everything's done there and then. And thirdly, everything I've searched up so far has come up. So it's got a wide, extensive knowledge database. And I've not been sponsored by Amboss or anything to say all of this because it is a paid product, but it is something that I found useful and that's why I'm recommending it. So if you'd like to check that out, then they do have a five day free trial, which you can check before deciding if it's the right thing for you. Okay, and the next part is the reviews. Now, when you're doing your reviews, first thing you want to do is set your new cars to zero because the whole point of this is you want to go through all of your review cards before you even think about getting through new cards. And the other thing is because you haven't studied this deck in a very long time, you probably have a lot of reviews that have built up. What you want to do is reduce this number from the max 9999 to a number you're comfortable with, let's say 10 cards per topic, which is what I do in, when I'm doing this method. Now, another thing that's very important to change is several of your settings. The first being your maximum interval setting. You wanna set this to something around 60, which is two months. And essentially what this means is that you'll see this card again in a maximum of two months. So even if you press good, 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 you'll see that card again in two months. And the reason why you wanna do this is to increase the amount of times you see that card before resetting that maximum interval. That will ensure, let's say, if you have an exam coming up in uh, four months time, you'll see that card at least twice before your exam. Next, you wanna change the interval modifier. Now, the reason why this is important is most likely you'll get the cards wrong. And when you do that, you want to make sure to reduce your interval modifier so you see that card more often. So essentially by changing these two settings, you'll see a card more often and it will reduce the interval when you get a card wrong. Now you could get a bit more advanced with this and change the ease intervals and ease factors as well. However, I actually found an add-on that does this automatically called auto ease factor. Essentially, all you have to do is input a number, a percentage of how many of your cards in your deck you want to get right. And I found that setting this between 80 and 90 is the best because if you get your cards right more than 90% of the time, then Anki will just become too easy for you and you will just get bored and just not enjoy doing your reviews. Whereas if you get your Anki cards wrong, you know, less than 70, so if you keep getting 60% of your Anki cards wrong, say for example, that's nearly every other card that you keep getting wrong and that way it becomes really frustrating and difficult to get through your reviews. So I found that setting this number to 80 to 90 is a good number to ensure that you recall sufficient information and to actually make your reviews stimulating and not make them too easy or too hard. And so with this auto ease factor add-on, you simply input that number, that percentage of your deck you wanna get right when you're doing your reviews, and it will automatically adjust your ease factor settings depending on how many times you click again on that card. So essentially it automatically shows you how often to show you that card. And then with those settings made, with that add-on downloaded, with how many cards you want to review per day selected, that way you just now just go through your reviews. You know, you've already gone through them in the browser, so you're already kind of familiar with the information. You've already made your life easier by adding images and extra information. And now going through your reviews should be much, much easier and a much more pleasant experience than just without doing any of this. Otherwise, you just get everything wrong and everything will be again and again and you'll just be frustrated and you'll never get through your reviews. Reviews. Okay, and then part three of this is post review. So once you've cleared all your reviews using this process, what do you do next? Well, essentially you now need to learn your new cards that you hadn't finished in that deck. And in order to do that, you need to optimize your Anki settings for learning new cards, for which I've already made a previous video. So check that out. And that will tell you the settings and how many cards to study and how to study your new cards left in the deck. So that's my process for dealing with Anki cards you haven't seen in a long time. If you're new to my channel, my name is Abby and I'm a final year medical student studying in London. If you like this video, then press the thumbs up button. And if you're new to my channel, then make sure to subscribe. I also write a weekly newsletter. So if you're interested in that, then check out the previous issues, link in the description below and also sign up there. With that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video.